everyone, welcome to another Meet the 818 Zoom interview. And today, I'm so excited about this guest. Let me tell you why. <laughs> I grew up with this guy. Um, he was the guy next door. Um, and he actually went to school with my sister's John Burroughs. And um, yeah, so I know him personally. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, Burbank Kid filmmaker, photographer, and creator and owner of Paisano Pictures, Johnny Brillantes. How are you, Johnny? <laughs> Today is going to be so much fun. I'm, <laughs> this, this is not like a Hollywood smile. This is a genuine, like, real, I'm so happy to do this. And I'd rather do it with you more than anybody else. Because, you know, you do any of these other, like, feature things, mm -hmm. and you send it out, and you're like, I guess this is me, I guess this is what I do, and you know me, <laughs> so you know if I'm BSing or not, you know? Oh, yeah, 100%. And just a little backstory. The reason why I'm talking to Johnny right now is for the longest time I thought he was up north in the Bay Area. So, you know, I was like, why would I feature Johnny? He's in the you know, he's up north. And then recently he had an interview with Voyage LA that I saw. And I was like, Johnny, you're still in the 818. Seriously. Came back. Came back. <laughs> I came back. That's right. So here I feel we like are. That's, that's Go ahead. Thing about, I'm sorry, but I feel like that's a social, that's a funny thing about social media. It's like sometimes you geotag things and sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. And then I'll like something, you know, and it's just like, wait, is he here? Is he there? Like, if I don't, because you come home, you're an Angelino, you're not going to be like, oh, here's me in the Hollywood sign, and here's, oh, sad about me, but, you know, you're not going to, you're just going to live in this town you live in, you know. Exactly, exactly. So, tell me a little, well, for, I know you, but for our viewers, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a Burbank kid, as, uh, as you're saying, and it's just, yeah, you know, I grew up sort of around the valley, and I grew up around uh, a motion picture family, and uh, everybody kind of has their facets that they were in. Like, I had a family who did post-production. I had a family who did voice acting. I have, you know, we all did different act. Like, my great uncle was Jack Lemmon's stunt double. You know, nice. and, and Ronald McDonald, whenever he was flipping in a commercial or something, like <laughs> I had family in stunts, I had family in so many aspects. And I just growing up, we were, we're Burbank, we're right next to the studios. And when we went to Burroughs, you know, when me and me and your sisters were going there, I was just kind of like, how is not there a more extensive film program here? Right. In 2019, not in 2019, oh my God, in 1999. And like, yeah. In the, in the Y2K area, like, why did we not, why were we so close to the films? Because it was all the, it was everything our parents did and the yeah. suburban, you know, whatever. I had friends who, I have friends who are like musicians, but they work at Marvel, you know? And it's just like, oh, that's just, that's just the industry. That's just job. And then I find movies and I, you know, obsess over them and I love them. And they're all screeners from my parents or from my friends' parents. Mm -hmm. And I love these movies. And I just go, you know, this is me. This is who I am. And do photography because every, everybody needs a headshot. Everybody has a pal. I just put a name. I'm that pal and I just put a name on what I do. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's so awesome. I think yeah. the last time I saw you, which was pretty cool, was uh, I ran into you at Barnes & Nobles in Burbank. <laughs> <laughs> it's the day job that's the hustle man <laughs> even then no actually i was jealous i wanted to work in barnes and nobles because you know me i love books it's like books are my life <laughs> yeah yeah stories man yeah stories you know? so that's why when i when i saw you there i was like oh you're here so jealous <laughs> you know barnes and noble which thankfully is still around good, yes good for them surviving at least in burbank you know, during COVID and everything, but the Burbank Barnes Noble is probably one of the best places because I met my first roommates there. I met my, I met a lot of, I met a lot of uh, celebrities buying books. You know, Blake Lively's mom came by. You know, it's always someone's mom buying a ton of magazines. Like, uh, who who else used to come in there? Uh, Ian Summerholder 
mm-hmm. from all that heartthrob stuff he does. I don't yes. know. All. I don't follow the Vampire Diaries. <laughs> you go, I don't know. What that, I don't know. I know that exists. <laughs> I don't know what that show is. But he was there. He was there. John C. Riley, mm-hmm. um, one of the sweetest people ever. Jen Fertilli, like a Burbank Barnes Noble. Like that's that's probably one of the places where I met the most like celebrity you know things and they weren't even like at the time like Paris Hilton or you know whatever the A-list people were of that time um but but what was really cool is you got to meet like Q-Tip you know (laughs) I'm just like oh yeah the big one the big big one I'm totally forgetting when Stefani came in once with Gavin Lostale when they were still together yeah and I was just like I remember being a kid being a you know watching MTV and like having this major crush on Gwen Stefani and then I'm ringing her up and it's just cool (laughs) but like Gavin Rossdale is the most down-to-earth chill dude and then you hear they break up in celebrity gossip and you're like oh man well I guess it didn't work out because that guy was awesome (laughs) that guy was cool you know and I can see I can picture you in my head too because like outside you're like Mr. Cool Calm and Collected but inside you're like I'm, you know, yeah, I mean, that's the funny thing. I mean, we grew up right next door to each other. Right. So, you know how we know how our parents raised us. Mm-hmm. And, and for you to say that, it's just kind of like that's it ties sort of into the social media aspect of things. Like, right. I won't shut up. But at the same time, like, I'm an only child. Mm-hmm. My only my imagination is my like, I, I can get down to business if I could really set, sit down and focus. But if there's people Absolutely. around. I'm not, I'm not going to throw a lampshade. I don't mean to throw a lampshade on my head, but I, I'm really about engaging whoever, whatever the moment is, you know, right. that's me. I, <laughs> I can write a bio for Voyage LA, whatever, but, but you and me in real life, m- memories of Barnes Noble, that's the <laughs> really, that's the real about yourself. Right, right. So. Yeah, no, when I actually when you did the film route, and I I wasn't surprised, to be honest with you, when you started doing the photography and the film, because yeah. I always thought you were this kid that just had like this, this imagination and this just like, you saw things differently. So when you yeah. when I saw this interview, and I'm like, oh, so Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I was so happy that you, this is, you know, this is something that you're doing. Um, so segueing to that, what have been your influences, um, biggest influences, just going through this film path and um, creating Paisano pictures? Well, honestly, like I said before, it's it, it, the main inspiration is family. And, you know, being around every, being around the studios and all that kind of stuff. You, as you get older, you develop your voice. You develop your creative voice. I mean, obviously, you, you as, even if you're not a creative person, you discover more about yourself every day, blah, 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 blah. Right. But that, that also constitutes the films that you watch, the films that you want to make, and all that kind of stuff. And then the, the, when you watch something and you're saying, like, that speaks to me. That's, those are the kind of movies that I want to make. That's the kind of that's the kind of thing that I want to invoke in more people. I want more people to, to, to understand this, or I want to understand, I want people to see the shoes and yada, 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 wear the shoes and the miles and all that right, kind of stuff. Right. And, uh, but as far as my greatest influence, it's like, it's my family. It's the discovery. I like, it goes from like, I grew up in the nineties. So Richard Linklater and all that, that big boom of like Kevin Smith, Tarantino, like all that it's, it's it invokes who I am as a filmmaker now. Because kids today, they they have cameras in their pockets and they can make, make a film like that. I didn't have that, you know. Right. And and Scorsese and everybody who did like celluloid film before then didn't have that, you know. Um, Coppola, you know, they all had. It was easier that it wasn't as easy then as it is now to just create something. And and I'm I I can say this all the time. I had my foot in the old way of doing things. I had my foot in the new way of doing things. You know, uh, I try to keep it biteable. You couldn't tell by how wordy I am, but I try <laughs> to keep things biteable. But then also at the same time, there's something that is good to sit down, be told a story. And that's why I think like huge movies like Marvel, like mm-hmm. super inspire me. Like 
But yet at the same time, I really enjoy Mumblecore, Duplass and Greta Gerwig and, and sort of their slow burn movies, you know, you watch, you watch While You're Young with Ben Stiller and Adam yeah. Driver, and you're just like, Zoolan oh, Zoolander and, and <laughs> you know, Ben, in the, what's his name, uh, Kylo Ren. Yes. Our movie together, <laughs> you know. Isn't that trippy? <laughs> so yeah, it's trippy. great, you know. <laughs> it's like the, it's the ultimate fan fiction, you know. Exactly. What is the universe? How do they meet each other? Which galaxy? Is it further further away? <laughs> You or know. isn't it too far away? Is it so <laughs> far away that it's right here? Right? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Okay. That's awesome. Um, so kind of tell us a little bit about how you started Paisano Pictures. What motivated you to start, you know, um, Paisano Pictures? And why is it called Paisano Pictures, by the way? <laughs> no, Paisano Pictures. Paisano Pictures is actually, it's, it's a tribute to my mom and my family mm. who raised me, you know, like, um, they, it's the patient, the patience of Paisanos, like all the men in the Paisano family are very stoic mm -hmm. and they keep things very, in our Paisanos, the West Coast Paisanos, um, they, my, my grandmother, she came from a long line of entertainment, uh, an entertainment family. Uh, the Mascaris, you know, my Aunt Connie, my cousins, they were all part of this. And I had such a close relationship to my grandfather that I was like, I, I got to name it after him. I had such a close relationship to my uncles mm -hmm. with the same name who put a camera in my hand and all that kind of stuff and took me to the AMC on San Fernando where there's a weird <laughs> Batman statue now, <laughs> you know? Yes, when it was just a one-story AMC, remember and that? It was like, <laughs> sprawled out exactly and it wasn't yeah i just I'm, i have dreams of the old amc right no batman and then they had like that weird kind of grid yes that was right above the box office yeah and, and you go to like the sony studios and they have that grid and i'm just like that's from burbank you know and yeah. that, whoever whatever architect came up with that <laughs> in the 80s was just like this is gonna be a thing <laughs> lo and behold there's this one guy in arcadia now going i remember that i have dreams of this you know <laughs> and it was like a u shape because you know how you go upstairs yeah new amc and mm -hmm. it's a giant u well let me tell you kids back in our day <laughs> it was the same exact thing just right where the yard house is you know? oh my gosh how weird is that back in our day <laughs> back in our day you know it's so bizarre to see like 30 30th anniversary of fill in the blank like ninja turtles or whatever's the 30th anniversary yes. i'm just like that was just what no no not yet this gray i'm not ready for this gray yet <laughs> like the reaper thumb we're not even that old. <laughs> no, we're not. It's really, I, I make a big think about it. I, m I make us think about like mm. the gray and the hair leaving yeah. my head. And I just, just, I worry and I freak out about it. And then I see someone who's really losing their hair and I go, you and me both, brother. And it's just like, and then they go, what are you talking about, you idiot? Look at you. You got so, pepper, you got so much of this. That. It's, it's, it's the grass is greener. Or, you know, we all imagine what our, social media feeds to be or whatever exactly so, well you can yeah, grow this so you know that's a plus <laughs> i know so, people you know, would kill for that <laughs> uh, you know i don't i and i prefer not i prefer not put me behind the camera the only time the only reason why i was in any of my quarantine scenes that i did during the pandemic the only reason why i was ever in them is because two or three actors before quit Oh you no! Know, or something else happened. Where it's like yeah. I'm the last person. I did a web series when I was in the when I was in the Bay Area, and we, it was just there was two of us. It was like my buddy holding the camera or me, yeah. and it was his camera. So that's why I was the lead. And then I was like, oh, oh my god, I'm leading this whole thing <laughs> as the actor. No, I want to be with you behind the camera. Right. You know. So Paisano Pictures sort of came from came from my family, mm -hmm. and I just continued doing it because I knew in 2007 that like YouTube was starting to become a thing. And I was just like, dude, this is, this is the people's way of creating art. You know, and most people just did lip sync video. I mean, before there were dance challenges on TikTok, yeah. people were just lip syncing, I want it that way, you <laughs> on know, YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube. And I knew digital media was gonna be a thing. I remember growing up and, via, and having the VHS taping like 
friends and right? all the shows, you know, <laughs> and, and not and, and and pausing it for the commercials, and then DVR becomes a thing, yeah. and you're like, I was gonna do, I this is I'm that just shows how basic I am because the universe gave you what this is, gave us what this is, you know exactly. You know, and then I, I went to school, I came back down. And when I came back down, I was just like, okay, now I'm really hitting Paisano Pictures. Because Paisano Pictures was just YouTube, create a, create a channel. Yeah. Or, you know, if it's my company, it's my channel, like I'm going to name it after, and that's my email, you know? Yeah. So it's just like, keep it simple. Because another back in our day was <laughs> when they told you, you got to make an email, don't make it your name. Right. You got to make it like, cool guy star wars 37 you know <laughs> they'll, so they'll never know that you'll never find you whatever whatever that's the 90s now you yeah. go to an interview and if you're in it and if your resume has your aol name they're not gonna hire you oh my gosh i can tell you stories man i i've seen resumes with i'm um, like you're applying for this job and this is your email your e oh my gosh your email is you know, <laughs> very racy stuff you know <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is no. level of a dub dub or whatever oh my gosh i i will share offline with you what i've seen because i don't think you know <laughs> it's for that general viewing pleasure <laughs> but i'm no different i have not changed my email since those days right it just happens to be my family name and i would prefer that you know versus like kylo ren 65 <laughs> you know <laughs> Oh, always, man. always funny when people pick usernames. Right? It is. Totally is. Um, I think we went off track. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that's me. I will totally do it. That is my fault. No, it's, it's just, better. you know, it's just like, I feel like I want to catch up more and do a personal, like, you know, just chat versus like. We did, the, we did the 30 minutes warm up and the 30 minutes warm up. It's just like, how's life? We haven't seen each other forever. Right, right. You know? Yeah. So. Uh, what's it called? So the quarantine scenes. Mm -hmm. So I've actually been watching. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if the Daredevil one was that, or I think that was before the quarantine scenes. Yeah, but no, I, I like the was way before. Way and before. I, yeah, it's way before, and I have to I have to give a lot of credit to uh, when I came back home to LA. Mm -hmm. uh, I reached out to the people who made me miss home the most, which was uh, Five Second Films, these kids from USC, and uh, Homemade Movies with this guy from Pasadena, um, Dustin. Mm -hmm. And and I, as I was seeing this and I was like, this is all happening in my Southern Cal, this is Southern California belongs to me, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so I saw all these guys doing it. So when I came back home, I was like, I gotta talk to these people. I either, I don't want to be in their things, I don't mean yeah. to be in their things, but I have to work with them. And I have to, and I had a like, you know, you, you could say law of attraction, whatever, whatever, but I had this thing in the back of my brain, which was, I wanted to, I wanted to reconnect with the parts of LA that made me miss it the most. And it was just, and it, it sounds like I really had a thought out plan to do this and I did not. I just <laughs> emailed them and I was just like, look, I love your stuff. I just moved back home to LA, you know, do you need an extra hand? And I didn't even care about getting paid for some of these people because they, I love working with, I love their content so much. Right. And then yeah. the Five Second Films kids, like I still talk to a couple of them. They like my stuff. They watch my stuff. And that's so rewarding. That's so much fun. And then I've been on a couple of homemade movies where we did Mortal Kombat, mm -hmm. a, a cardboard Mortal Kombat. It's just like, and that, that invoked the latest episode of Quarantine Scenes where mm -hmm. I just started becoming, now that we're coming back from the pandemic or the lockdown and the quarantine yeah. and all this kind of stuff, I, I, I spend more time in the garage the same way that like Ben and Dustin from Homemade Movies did when mm -hmm. they were making miniatures of Jurassic World and, you know, Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman, you know? Yeah. And so I was just like, I wanted to do something like what they did. So I kind of came up with quarantine scenes in that way. What was your biggest challenge filming the quarantine scenes? It couldn't have been easy having to do like Zoom here, Zoom there. So kind of like walk us through that challenge, man. <laughs> so the obvious, the obvious thing is, is that 
when you're acting, acting, and I am, and I was just like when Falcon and Winter Soldier were like pausing yeah. while they were overseas, and all these, all this stuff went down. I was just like, how are real productions like even getting by? Right. I don't live in that budget. I don't live in that world. So my thing was is that I was just like the biggest challenge was like getting people to getting actors to understand that like what we're doing is a self tape of a of a con of a IP that already exists. Yeah. Doing your own spin on it, making it original, making it your own, keeping your craft fresh. Um, but with acting, if you don't have someone reading to you off camera, especially, you know, for a uh, self tape, when the actors send it in electronically through email in the 21st century, <laughs> you know, when you don't have your roommate or your girlfriend or whoever's behind the camera reading the other lines to you, it's so hard to just do a line read and have, give, give the director different versions of being able to see you in a different way. And that was the obvious, that was the obvious hurdle, the obvious challenge, but the real big challenge you know, and there's where we break it down. This is the real big challenge was after the George Floyd murder. Mm -hmm. It became so clear to me that I'm just like, this, my silly thing and what America is going through. Like George Floyd, in, in, and, and I'm, I'm not black, but you see this thing where as a half minority or whatever else, you see how big the world is and what's happening to this country. And I was like, my little show is so silly. I can't do it, you know, and I can't do it by just being me, mm -hmm. being Italian, being Chinese, being Filipino. That's the three things of my life. There's so many things out in the world. So, and a guy at that too. So I was just like, you know, I had to bring in more producers in here. I had to, I had to have more than just my, choice you know we did house bunny i never i still have not seen that movie all the way through <laughs> you know because i brought on my buddy stephanie who does a bunch of really cool um content for um for nerdbot mm -hmm. on on facebook and stuff and she has these like show these show debates debate shows and all that kind of stuff and uh i've been on that and you know i was just like i need a i need a i need a woman's touch outside of like telling the girlfriend, be like, hey, what movie would I do? What movie should I do? She's a real artsy-fartsy lady, so she'll bring up artsy-fartsy <laughs> movies and right. be like, my artsy-fartsy and yours, it's too much fartsy and too much artsy, you know? <laughs> so so I got her, and then my buddy Daniel Mills, who I met at Meltdown when I moved back down, Meltdown mm -hmm. Comics in Hollywood, there was a little, um, there was an improv school right next to it. And what was really cool is I got to meet these actors these working actors, these, there were ones that were on television and then there were kids in like improv, like they were working at like, or like they were performing like at either Second City or Improv Olympics or whatever else is around right now or still around or whatever they do uh, as working actors. Um, but I met this guy, Daniel Mills, and he's like, he's a showstopper. And we did a short film uh, with this, with, uh, with my, with my buddy, um, I don't know. I, I don't know how to market them. I should be able to market them like straight up. Um, but we, we did the short film with a bunch of friends I met at Universal. Cause that I could say Universal, yeah. the theme, I worked at the theme parks. I got to know stunt actors there. And you know, when I say, you know, Universal, that makes more sense. Yeah. It's a you know, graph. So, exactly. so yeah, I met people at the various jobs when I worked at the Warner Brothers tour area. Like, and I just pull from the people and and I was just like we we, we made this movie uh called um the good samaritan mm -hmm. and it was originally written to just be this guy helps this other guy load something in the back of a truck that seems a little human shaped yeah you know and I was just like you know I want to take a break from directing so I help uh line produce this one for Peter Algiers, mm -hmm. he has a channel called Austin's Obsession Productions. Um, and he, and so he wrote this and I was like, can I cast this? And so I made the, the person helping Daniel Mills, Daniel Mills is black. Yeah. And that changes the whole scheme or the whole like angle of the movie, right. you know? And, uh, 
And so I brought him back because he was in the third quarantine scenes as the Bill Pullman character from Independence Day. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, black president. <laughs> yeah, motherfuckers, take it easy. You know, sorry for the question. But you know what I mean? Like, Are I got it. So I brought him back. Uh -huh. And he's been helping me with the last couple um, quarantine scenes. Like, we just did Rick and Morty. Um, and those are mutual friends. Some, some actors that he... He brings into the quarantine scenes, it's just like, they really blow me away. We did Fresh Prince, um, BJ Minor, and uh, Ruben Mills. Man, I was taking forever on Fresh Prince because I wanted to get it done right, you know? <laughs> and it just, things weren't aligned, you know? Yeah. I didn't want to do something quick and simple. Like, I want to do the Fresh Prince scene. Like, right? <laughs> and, uh, and those actors knocked it out of the park. BJ Minor, like, Oh my God, like I've never, and then we did, uh, what was it? We did, um, we did uh, Die Hard and the simple phrase of yippee yeah. ki -yay is so <laughs> much better our way, you know? No offense to like Bruce and everything he did before, you know? And not to say that, you know, in the nerd world, Die Hard is, you know, yeah. is whatever it is now, but like the original basis that it's like, it's just a reboot you know right, quarantine right. scenes is is mini reboots mixed with like uh what's it called like tiktok it's a well involved yeah. more it's a more involved tiktok there's more curating that goes into it there's more time that takes to edit it yeah and have it be a uniform thing so but yeah, no, it's, I, you know, I, I've watched a couple and I will go through some of them more. I promise. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. You're like, you're basically but, family. Yeah. So anytime, <laughs> anytime there's a like by, you know what? It's like when someone you don't know finds mm -hmm. your, your stuff, you're just like, oh, okay, good. It's reaching beyond my family and friends. But right. when it's a family member or a friend you haven't seen in like decades and they see it, Oh, it's a treasure. It's so much like, <laughs> oh, you still see me on social media? You're watching my and you liked it? Or you right? reshared it? You don't reshare it? Like, that's, <laughs> it's a treasure. It's so much more. I can only imagine, because I have a family member who is a celebrity to, to their degree, yeah. that when we went to Comic-Con, people go up to her and they ask for her autograph and they dress up as her character and all that kind of stuff. And... And I'm like, oh, you know, what is, what is it, what does that feel like for her right. to see people dress up as a character that she just does her job, that her job is to be that character. Her yeah. job is to do that. And I go, what is that feeling, you know, but the feeling, you know, I, I don't, not, I don't envy it. I just, mm -hmm. I'm curious about how, how warm that makes you feel. Yeah. Um, but the warmth that I get from you to wanting to do this this is like i feel like i'm this is like winning an oscar oh for my week Thanks, you know honey. this is yeah, like this made my month dude this made my you know, <laughs> and on top of that it's a great cap it's a great like justification for quarantine scenes because we worked hard on it exactly. you know exactly no and it's yeah. it shows like honestly if you guys have a chance to check out the videos it's awesome. It'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. It's some, some of them turn unexpectedly. Like when you and the, your friend were, um, this was the daredevil one and you had it like daredevil is so cool. So they're yeah. sitting there and, you know, I thought that you guys were going to talk about daredevil and yeah, then I you see know. daredevil come up and, you know, he goes and says, I borrowed your car and yeah. I put gas in oh, it. Yeah. And here you go. <laughs> daredevil is real cool, man yeah so i was cracking up i was like oh my gosh did not expect that. you know and that's that's the other thing too i mean especially with like nerd culture or just like all the tv culture all the stuff mm -hmm. everything is taken so seriously yeah and there are a lot of things especially you know x-men and civil rights and all these other things you know i mean we did x we did x-men on quarantine scenes and mm -hmm. my magneto is a black woman versus you know all these other things we could we could still do all the serious stuff that needs to get talked about right but right. there's some stuff that has too much steam in it that really needs to be taken down a notch like right. i love daredevil <laughs> let's have some fun you know let's let's all enjoy and smile together 
right. for as long as we can be on this earth, you know? Right. Well, here's an off the, off the cuff question for you. Daredevil Ben Affleck or Daredevil Charlie Cox? <laughs> oh, oh, Charlie Cox. No, no question. I mean, Ben, I think Ben gets a really, Ben's, Ben's, Ben has it pretty rough. Yeah. You know, with Batman, with G. Lee, with the poor, like, there's that, remember that meme where it was Ben and Henry Cavill and then they were oh, just talking. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's how I feel Ben lives his life, you know? <laughs> but Charlie Cox does so, like, if Charlie Cox did a half of the performance that he did, I'd be like, yeah, that's on par. That's their double. Cool. But yeah. Charlie Cox takes it into such a level. Like, right? Daredevil is so good. That's why I had to do a fan film about it. But like Daredevil is so, Netflix Daredevil is so much personal as growing up Catholic and and just someone who's doing, I mean, it's basically Batman. It's someone who's doing doing their best to do something that is not good. Like it's not good for them, right? you know? Right. And it's, it, it's a wear tear on them, but it's just, you know, the the fight in the hallway is just is the first is one of the first things you go to. It's really great. Oh yeah, but Deborah Ann Wall, um, like Vincent D'Onofrio, like the cast is out of this world. The story is told yep. so well, and it's just and and then the second season with um with Bullseye. I mean, the mm-hmm. real big thing is is that when someone who, like me who uh, undiagnosed. Uh, you know, with either depression or ADHD or whatever it is I have, you know, whatever's jumbling around in here, uh-huh. you know, there's, there's, especially as an only child, you have the inner, like, what am I, like, am I doing right? Me, what's, how am I, you know, whatever. And there's a part where, where uh, Charlie Cox at the end, spoilers, uh, <laughs> you know, where it's, it's Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio. And, and he and if I if I would have done a quarantine scene, I probably would have done the one with John Bernthal right. uh, in the second season. But one of the best best moments, and so vindicating when you watch and you're just like, "This is a Daredevil a superhero show," is the part where he where he just says, "I beat you." And he's basically saying that to himself. And there's so many I, we could go down a Daredevil like yeah. I, I can't wait to go <laughs> rewatch it. I've been bugging my buddy to watch it for years since it first came out. Right? He's like, I'm doing superhero stuff. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, you're going to watch it. You're ne- ne- never going to hear me stop talking about it. <laughs> so if he knows that I'm going to rewatch it, he's going to be like, here we go. <laughs> my buddy from Barnes & Noble. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny's buddy. Didn't mean to, you know, <laughs> have you rewatch it, but you know. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to hear me talk about it again. Right. So um, as we're sort of wrapping up, um, are there any projects that you can share with us or what are we going to be, what should we well, watch out for? Well, because of quarantine scenes, it's called quarantine scenes and we're all getting back to our regular lives and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm in the, bro- in the process of like getting the band back together in a way. Um, so some of the people from Good Samaritan, um, it, I, I'm, I'm forming the band again and I and we we still have yet to meet on what we want to do, but I have, I have a, you know, another feature in my back pocket that I really want to do, um, but that has yet to be written and seen, um, because I have the house, I have the actors, I have the idea of the script. I, it has yet to be like fully formed, and on the sly at my day job, it's it the wheels are turning. <laughs> for what I'm doing outside of my day job. Yeah. Not to say I'm not focusing on my job. If anybody from work is watching, <laughs> you know, it's just no. when they, we, we have a job that has a lot of downtime, you know, and in that downtime, as you create a person, your mind never stops spinning. Right. It's, right. A, it's, it's a curse, but it's also a gift, you know, yeah, like no. X-Men and right. more superhero stuff. <laughs> Oh, no, I can totally relate. I'm like, I'm doing my nine to five, but in the back of my head, it's like, oh, great. I have this interview that I need to do. I have emails, have to make the time. Oh, by the way, I need to make dinner too. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Get the meal prep going. Then you got to go to the gym. Then you got to take the 
and basketball or tennis and you're just like okay oh man a lot of stuff to do it's a balancing act i tell you <laughs> but you um huh you parents oh and someday you know me i don't know how i'm gonna do it i have no idea i think i'll be okay but i think i don't know but you'll be like great said, man you'll be modern great. parents today <laughs> you have a lot on your place especially after that pandemic you know and and raising kids in the 21st century i oof, oh man pray for me is what i'll say <laughs> that's a whole different interview <laughs> yeah um so filmmakers or future filmmakers um what advice would you want to give them if they pursue this path or your path do it now don't overthink it i mean i live in my head and there's there's this, such a thing where you can plan and plan and plan and plan and and do it until it never gets done. Like I am still sitting on my first feature that we already screened and it's not on Amazon yet because I'm like, it's not perfect, it's not perfect. So I gotta, I'm, I'm telling myself, <laughs> my past self, my future self <laughs> and anybody who sees themselves in any creative, like I, I see myself in, you know, the directors that I like and, and all that kind of stuff. So my advice is just, just do it. You have everything that you have right now, get out of your head. Even if it's, even if it's not exactly as you want it, there's this really great um, motto, done is better than perfect. You know, if it's not great, if it's not exactly what you want it, there's always the next one. You know, even in like the pandemic and quarantine scenes, the pandemic hit, what's the next one? Well, you just adapt and we just make what we make, you know? Right. Oh, that's, that's, I don't know. That's, that's it. No, don't that's a good philosophy. That's, that's to me, advice. again. <laughs> that's, that's excellent advice. <laughs> for me to tell myself, so I can watch this interview and said, Johnny, you said, you even said. <laughs> oh, I'll send you the link. And I'm like, Johnny, remember when you said, click. <laughs> That'll be my ringtone. And I'm just like, oh, God, this isn't perfect. I, you know, I'm holding my future self to it by finishing that feature putting it on Amazon. Do it, Johnny. Do it, man. I'm All right. So. Johnny's going to roll his eyes. <laughs> well, how, how can they follow you? Um, where can they find you? Where can they watch quarantine scenes? Well, did you see it just field. like Bill and Ted that you're like, you're like, oh, where are they following? I'm like, okay. You know? <laughs> I know. I saw that. I'm it was like, this. okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So you have paisanopictures.com, which is just the everything I do. Um, but then you have Paisano Pictures on Instagram, um, any of the social medias, that's the thing that I do. Uh, but I also have this unboxing show that we're going to be bringing back, Unboxing Briefs with my buddy Brian, uh, where we just unbox a, a ton of collectibles because we're just two nerds. The, I, I, in my brain, I want to say it's the dad and the zad. He's the, he, the daddy and the zaddy. Like, I'm not quite a dad, you know, but I have the dad bod. So, you know... But yeah, Unboxer Briefs on Instagram and, and YouTube is, is one of the ones that's coming back soon. Um, and yeah, there's always something. There'll be a, there'll, I promise you, if you're looking at, you know, Paisano Pictures 10 years after this interview, there's got to be something there. There's got to be something new there. Right, right. No, I, you know, so everyone follow him. <laughs> follow Johnny. I don't know which screen you're at, so I'm just going to go this. <laughs> Oh, Brady Budget. Oh. Right. But um, awesome filmmaker, very talented, 818 local. So please follow him, Paisano Pictures. Johnny, thank you so much for coming in and doing thank this interview. You.